It's been uh, raining now for nearly three straight days here in Southern California. I have a tennis tournament tomorrow and it's been a week since I hit with a live person um, and it's not conducive for my confidence tomorrow. In addition to that, I've actually haven't hit with anybody in real life with the new V-Core 95 2023 edition. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, I wish it would kind of at least stop raining today in the afternoon so I could go out there and hit for a few minutes with my daughter just to get used to the sensation of hitting again. Um, you know, I'm starting to understand why the suicide rate in the Pacific Northwest is significantly higher than the national average. Uh, it's been only three days of worth of raining and I'm already starting to feel the blues. Um, I can't imagine what it's like, uh, where it's like this for 300 days a year. Since I'm stuck inside, uh, feeling the blues and dealing with the rain and the leaky roof, I figure I'd make another video, hopefully to cheer myself up. Um, recently I've been watching a lot of videos about camera equipment, uh, since I picked up my Z6 II, um, about two, three months ago, um, just to, you know, look at what options and, and uh, what camera gears go well with it. I've uh, been doing a lot of research on obviously like microphone setup, so on and so forth. Um, so as I was watching some of these YouTube videos, I noticed there's a lot of um, videos about the Nikon ZFC uh, or ZFC for those of you who are Brits, Canadians, uh, Kiwis and uh, Aussies, um, basically the rest of the English speaking world. Uh, and I noticed there's been a lot of uh, what I would say misleading reviews in regards to the ZFC. So this is the this is the new this is the new um, Nikon ZFC. I mean, I say new. It's been a couple of years old now. It's been out for a while. Um, and uh, in my opinion, um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, people who, or influencers who review this particular camera, who are professional photographers, uh, and the reviews don't tend to focus on what this camera is actually designed for. Um, they rather tend to focus sort of on the negatives of this particular camera, which is the fact that, um, you know, it has, a, it has a DX crop sensor, uh, it's not particularly fast uh, for a mirrorless camera. It doesn't shoot, you know, like 15, 20, 30 frames per second uh, like some of the uh, other mirrorless cameras does. Um, it's, it's a little bit um, plasticky in feeling. Um, the kit lens selections aren't great. Uh, and these are, yeah, these are a lot of complaints that people have about this particular camera. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of, I want to sort of set the record straight. This camera isn't made for professional photographers. It's not designed to uh, be used as a part of your professional workflow. Uh, and yeah, it's got the latest and greatest mirrorless uh, sensors and technologies, uh, maybe not greatest, um, but it, it really isn't designed to be uh, your primary camera. Uh, and I'll tell you why or what this particular camera and who this particular camera is designed for. Uh, it is designed for someone like me, okay? someone like me who grew up with this particular camera. This is the Nikon FM2. This is my dad's camera, uh, bless his soul. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to borrow this from my brother uh, to teach my daughter how to actually use a film camera. This is a mechanical film camera uh, with mechanical um, dials and shutters, mechanical just about everything under the sun. Um, mechanical film loader. Uh, the only thing on here that's electric, I believe, is the um, it's the uh, the light meter, which is uh, like uh, uh, quite a few FM2s from this era, is actually broken. So what I do is when I take pictures with this particular camera, I would use an app on my iPhone to get what the fill, uh, aperture and shutter speed should be. So we took this camera to uh, Zion National Park in Bryce Canyon over uh, the holidays and I had a, had a fantastic time with it. I just, you know, memories flooded back of 
I was using this camera to basically capture every single family memory uh, since the 1980s, almost all the way to the early 2000s. This was the one primary camera that we use on a regular basis when we go traveling, uh, family gatherings, um, you know, portrait photography, uh, everything under the sun. Um, so uh, when I was shooting this with, with this camera, I just remember how much fun it was to, you know, adjust the dials, play with your shutter speed, uh, change your aperture, manually uh, wind and unwind the camera, um, you know, loading the film, all that fun stuff. What photography used to be like for me when I first started learning how to do photography. Um, so when uh, we came back and I started to realize how much I missed taking pictures using mechanical means. And that's why this particular ZFC, ZFC, this particular ZFC intrigued me um, because it does have all these mechanical dials. Uh, you can manually change your shutter speed uh, all the way from uh, four seconds up to uh, one four thousandths of a second uh, and also put it in the third step mode so you could adjust um, your shutter and aperture using um, the side dials. There's a, um, there's a mechanical uh, um, exposure compensation button uh, dial. You can manually adjust your um, ISO which, you know, for the Holy Trinity, you have every single control right here. You have, you have your aperture, you have your shutter speed, and you have your uh, ISO control all within uh, the two fingers, uh, your index and your thumb finger on both hands. Uh, so the next logical question is, why not just shoot with the, uh, with the FM2? Uh, why not just shoot film um, if it's so much fun? And yeah, it was fun, but uh, when we came back um, and I did some just simple calculation in my head, each roll film costs anywhere between eight to 16 to $20, depending on what you get. Like if you get some of the high end professional films or uh, tungsten, tungsten specific color films, uh, they could be quite expensive. Um, and they shoot uh, once, and if you make a mistake on film, you can't review your picture and figure out whether you've gotten that particular moment on camera. Um, and delete it and reshoot if you can or have to. Um, in addition to that, like when we came back, it took us uh, almost two weeks to get the film developed. And uh, addition to that, um, I think it was like $16 to get the film processed. Uh, and at the end of the day, it just came back to you on a single CD anyway. They, <laughs> they develop a film, they put the film in front of a lens, take a picture of it and scan it. So at the end of the day, you get a digital file. You don't get like a physically printed picture, uh, piece of paper uh, unless you, you know, print it on a photo film off of a digital printer. So the benefit of having a fully analog system is sort of defeated in that the end result that you get is still a digitized uh, product. So this for me was the logical choice. Um, you still get all the joys of all the mechanical buttons, the actual process of taking pictures. Uh, nowadays, taking uh, photography on the latest and greatest digital camera equipment, um, you know, it's almost like the camera is doing more work than you are. Uh, I don't, I don't know if. if you know, my photography friends will agree with me on that front. Yeah, the technology is amazing. Um, the lenses are sharper, uh, the sensors are bigger, the resolutions are higher than any film um, that you ever come across. Uh, you know, the, the results are tack sharp. Um, but, but you know what, like <laughs> with my Z, uh, Z62, which I'm shooting myself on right now, most of the time I just put it in auto mode and just, it's basically a point and shoot camera for me right now because it does a better job of selecting the right ISO. It does a better job at selecting, you know, the right aperture and, and shutter speed. Um, you know, the only time I ever kind of sort of adjust things is I go in and change uh, the aperture based on the depth of field I want and or the shutter speed depending on whether or not I want to freeze the action. So um, to me, I, I, I really do miss the fact that uh, with this particular camera, with the FM2, you know, everything you have to control it. You are on top of 
uh, the shutter speed. You're on top of the Holy Trinity of, you know, shutter speed, aperture, um, you can't really control the ISO. This is really kind of sort of the best of both worlds for me. Um, you know, if I don't want to put in a uh, fully automatic mode, there's all these dials I could play with. Uh, that tactile feeling of taking a photo, adjusting my aperture and all that stuff is still there. Uh, there is a manual uh, focus ring in the front of this lens, although um, you know uh, I'm not quite uh, confident in my manual focusing capability, so a lot of times I do put it in autofocus. Uh, the autofocus is amazing. Um, I, I don't know if it's better than you know uh, the Canons or the Sony's or whatever, but for compared to what I've been using in the past, it's a lot years ahead. Um, I kind of sort of equate this to uh, like in cars, right? Like if you have a, a, an automated manual, like a Porsche PDK, um, sure, it's it shifts faster than humanly possible. Uh, it's a, a wonderful, tremendous technology. Um, it it really is light years ahead of the old 6B manual. Uh, but one thing it can't replicate is the actual physical sensation of ch changing gears yourself. Uh, putting the car in first, second, reverse, whatever, using the clutch uh, to manually engage and disengage, uh, using the uh, clutch pedal to manually engage and disengage the clutch, you know, all that tactile feeling you will not and cannot get in a PDK. Um, there are uh, certainly occasions where, you know, PDK is great, like say if you're stuck in traffic or if you're out of track where you want the ultimate and the fastest possible shift speed, um, and it's amazing. Uh, but that's the reason why I still drive my, you know, my Z4 with a third pedal. Um, you know, I, I, I want that sensation. I like that sensation. I want that op uh, opportunity to actually operate a third pedal and operate the stick that changes gear and feel the engagement and disengagement uh, of the gear. Um, so uh, I, I feel like this, this is actually a great uh, compliment to someone like me who actually does have a professional workflow type camera. I mean, I'm not a professional photographer or videographer, uh, but I do occasionally have the need to use a really high-end camera for work purposes. So I have my Z6 II um, for that particular purpose, uh, but this actually is a great complement for when I want to kind of just play around and have fun, right? I mean, it's not always about work. When I go take pictures, um, I want you know something that I could play around with with the uh, with the uh, dials and whatnot. Um, kind of like just when I sometimes I don't want to drive man, uh, an automatic. I want to go drive my manual. Um, same thing. Um, so back to uh, this particular camera is there's a lot of talk about how um, you know. Uh, it's not designed for a pro. Yeah, it's absolutely not designed for a pro. It's designed to be a second camera. Uh, but what it does have is a DX sensor that's at a higher resolution than my Z6 II. Um, so when you put the Z6 II in the DX mode, like for example, if you want to take uh, uh, an existing lens like my uh, 700 or 70 to 200 F2, um, to a DX crop that effectively changes it from a 10, from a 70 to 200 millimeter to a 105 millimeter to, to 300 millimeter zoom lens at f2.8. Uh, f um, there's some calculations you have to do. It's not really 2.8. It's, a, it's a, you lose a stop. But uh, on that particular crop sensor on the Z6, when you crop down to DX mode, it's a 16 megapixel uh, sensor. Um, so you take that 24 and a half megapixel full frame, when you crop it down, it's, it's only really giving you 16. This DX sensor has a higher um, density count for pixels. So basically you get a 21 megapixel DX size sensor. So that same lens on this camera would result in a 105 to 200 millimeter zoom, or two, 300 millimeter zoom at 2.8 on the DX uh, uh, size. Uh, at 21 megapixels, so this would actually effectively get a better, higher resolution, more uh, uh, sharp rendering of a uh, a uh, shot from the lens at DX uh, sensor size. So uh, there's there's some fun that I could have this in conjunction with uh, the same kit, uh, same lenses that I have from the Z6. Um, so all the prime lenses, all the zoom lenses, all the Z lenses that I bought and are using for the Z6 II, <clears throat> I can use on this <clears throat> and effectively increase the zoom range 
by 1.5. And just the fact that it's, you know, it's, it's a smaller and easier to carry camera, especially with these pancake uh, kit lenses. This is a 28 millimeter 2.8. Not the greatest lens in the world, but it's still fairly sharp. It's still fairly fun to use, and it's a, a 2.8, so it's not it's not great for a prime, but it's it's pretty good. It still gives you a pretty good uh, range of depth of field. Um, but it's small enough where it virtually fits within my pocket. If I want to go to, uh, I don't know, uh, if we're going to on vacation, uh, and I don't want to bring my professional lens set up with me, this will do. Um, like say if we're going to Arches later in the year or going to Joshua Tree uh, National Park for some night astrophotography, this will probably be a better choice, um, especially given the different um, zoom factors if I want to take the long lens with me. Um, but say if we're going to Indian Wells this year or going to some uh, tennis term, professional tennis tournament, this would be a better choice for me to bring because it's small, it's inconspicuous. It's just more fun to use if you're not doing stuff for professional purposes. So the other day, um, I was out helping my daughter with one of her photojournalist uh, projects for school. And she was out at the park taking pictures uh, with a film camera that her teacher assigned her. Um, and just for fun, I brought this camera with me. Um, and I think it's been, it's, it's been a while since, uh, it hasn't been since I went to Zion with this camera. Um, did I feel so much fun taking pictures just for fun? Um, we're out at the park. She's taking, you know, pictures of stuff and I'm just walking around following her, uh, with this camera, just taking whatever random pictures I want to take pictures of. Um, and you know, I, I just remembered and discovered, uh, the joy of taking pictures again, not just for work, but for fun, just to take pictures. Um, is this a better camera than the Z6? No. Um, but it, it is more fun to use. It is more, um, uh, just that tactile sensation and just playing with the buttons and all that, uh, just will never go away. You're, you're not going to have that opportunity on any of the newer full frame Nikon cameras. That's for sure. Uh, so yeah. Um, that and this, this looks just like, I mean, they look like twins. They should have separated at birth, right? So they separated at birth and what, about 40 years, four decades worth, worth of technology. Like dimensionally, they're, they're almost identical, like in size. Uh, the button layout or the design of that top prism, uh, the lens look alike. The uh, depth is roughly the same from the top. They're fairly similar. I mean, this, this, they're, they're practically twins. Um, and you know, I just remember how much fun I used to have shooting pictures with this. Yeah, I know this isn't, this isn't meant to be a professional workhorse. It's not. Um, but what it is, is a perfect complement to a professional workhorse. Uh, it's a perfect complement for someone like me who, uh, wants that, you know, that nostalgic feeling of taking pictures with buttons. Uh, I want that, that, and, and, you know, it incorporates all the latest technology Nikon has to offer on the mirrorless sensor. Uh, the autofocus capability, uh, is pretty good for what it is. Um, and you know, the color rendering is sharp and beautiful and consistent. Um, and you know, just, uh, as a complement to, uh, the Nikon system that I already have, I know there are probably, uh, cameras out there that are old school like this, that has the digital sensors on them, uh, that may be of a better value of bio or whatever, but you know, I've got a set of Nikon, uh, mirrorless lenses, the Z lenses, as well as a whole set of, uh, existing F now lenses. So this was, you know, this was a logical choice for anybody who's in the Nikon system or ecosystem that wants a uh, you know, highly flexible, easy to work with, something to carry around, fun camera, like a toy as a second camera to your, you know, Z6, Z7, Z9, or whatever it is, uh, full frame uh, cameras that you have. This is what it's, it's made for.